Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the second update to the stretcher getting locked inside the helicopter, stuck inside the helicopter. On um, this last update, we have added the maintenance manual procedures for adjusting the stretcher cable from Metro. And after you properly adjust the cable, it halfway prevents the um, cam from over rotating. So we're gonna check that out. But you can also still get the stretcher stuck inside the aircraft, and we're gonna show you how that can happen. All right. So the stretcher we have here is a Verno Model 28A1. Uh, the same situation can happen with the smaller stretcher, which is just a Model 28A. And uh, this is the Metro interior, and it's on an EC-135 helicopter. If you look underneath the stretcher at the mounting plate and the lock, this locks the stretcher into the aircraft with the red line on it. See that? And the way it operates is you pull this handle right here. It's on the back left, left side of the stretcher. That's what releases the lock so you could slide the stretcher out. And it operates normally like that. And once it's released, you see how it raises up? The top of the lock twists and it raises the lock far enough so you could pull the stretcher out. That's normal operation. But if somebody's loading the aircraft, and if you have your hand on the handle, and then somebody grabs the cable, because they're just hanging onto the stretcher, maybe helping you guide it in, and you pull that cable right there, Watch what happens. Oh man, right there, it jumps the cam. Then you lose all the tension on the cable. And then there's no way to release the lock anymore because you can't twist that thing. The only way you can unlock the stretcher now from the mount is you have to get a long screwdriver or something in there, use some leverage and twist it back counterclockwise, back to the normal position so that the red line lines up. Once the red line's lined up, you're back to normal operation. So the example that we just saw right there, where the lock over rotated and jumped the cam or jumped the tooth and then gets stuck. Well, the example we saw there was due to the fact that the sheathing was not properly adjusted. So we'll sh go through that real quick, show you where that is, where the adjustment is and how to do that, all right? So right here is where you adjust the sheathing. And if the sheathing, if it's installed correctly, that prevents over rotation of the lock if you grab the cable. And you'll know that it's not adjusted correctly if you go full deflection of the handle and you can see this gap right here. You can see that the sheathing is not contacting the, the fitting that's attached to the top of the lock. You see the gap right here, that's when you know that's not adjusted correctly. If you adjust it too much, then the lock will not lift up far enough to disengage. Here's a look at where the adjustment is in relationship to the handle. You go to Metro Aviation's website, you go to EC-135, and it's, um, it's the equipment maintenance manual for the installation of the Emergency Medical Services Systems Kit 135 Mike-100, Chapter 85-22-02, Paragraph 1-2. And it says, uh, this is the troubleshooting for the litter install. Okay, failure of engagement of the pin to fully seat or not disengage sufficiently can be corrected by adjusting the length of the actuation mechanism by loosening the cable, adjustment nut, and adjusting until there's an eighth inch of free play in the handle and retightening the cable. I can't find anywhere in Metro's manual on where to replace this cable. But on their drawing, it's drawing number 135, Mike-3500. I'm sure this is proprietary, so I'm just going to zoom into the cable. All it says is cable adjustment. And it also gives you the part number. But anyway, I guess if you need this drawing, you're just going to have to get a hold of Metro. All right. So this one, like I said, I adjusted. And with the handle fully retracted, you can see right here where the arrow is pointing that the clevis hits against the sheathing preventing it from over rotating. He's trying to squeeze the cable right here and it won't go any further because it's being stopped by the sheathing. That's cool, that works normal. But still, there's another problem, so we're gonna look into that. So the problem that still remains is if you grab underneath the stretcher and you grab onto the sheathing, it will automatically jump the cam. Right here, when he grabs onto the sheathing, he just squeezes on it a little bit, it jumps the cam. He could jump it twice. There's so much play or there's so much, I don't know, movement in that outer part of the cable. A simple fix that could alleviate this problem is this little bracket. It's just a piece of metal, looks like titanium or stainless steel. And you pick up the two cap screws that are on the top of this lock. Or once that's on, the lock still operates normal, but it 
it's not allowed to go high enough to go over the cam. Like right here, you could see somebody's pulling on the cable and it's trying, it won't go any further to go over the cam so that you're stuck. Okay. Of course, this is just a prototype. This is nothing that's in any aircraft. We just put this together to see if it would work. And uh, I don't know what you'd have to do to sign that off if you put it on the stretcher. You'd have to deal with your uh, company on that one. This kind of thing doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's a, it could be a world of hurt. So let's explain to our crews how this can happen and uh, try to prevent our stretchers from being stuck inside the aircraft, especially with patients on them. This is the third revision to this video. I'll put a link in the uh, I'll put a link in the description to the previous video, so that it's not gone forever. But it's not going to be um, public; it'll just be unlisted. So you have to have the link either way. Just make an update because I needed to be educated on the adjustment of the cable. I've installed the cable before, maybe twice, but it's been a long time. I just remember the last time I did it. It's a pretty close exact fit. You have to cut, you have to cut the sheathing to fit, and you have to cut the cable to fit. So I screwed it up. I cut it a little too short and it didn't fit. And I had to order a new one. My fault. You know, that's that's tough. And the thing is, the the adjustment on that collet or the collar or that adjustment nut, you can it's only like a quarter inch, maybe a half of an inch. Anyway, all I'm saying is it's not super easy. It's not just um, remove and replace, all right? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys found some value in the video. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.